the greatest commandment. Greetings, scholars from all over the world. It is Sunday school time, and our topic, the greatest commandment, Bible basis, Leviticus 19 and 18, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, and Mark 12, 28 through 34. We're on lesson one, and today's date will be March the 3rd, 2024. Let us pray. Dear Lord, impress upon us the greatest commandment of them all, loving you and loving others. Humble us and give us the heart to love others the way you love us. Let this word dwelling us richly, O oh God, plant it in our hearts and help us to be doers of your word and not just hearers only. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Memory verse, Mark 12, 30 and 31. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And we know that these are the words of Jesus and he is commanding us to love him with our all, all of us. My God, help us, Lord, to love you like this. Introduction. <clears throat> debating the commandments. The scribes often argue with Jesus about the correct way to interpret the law. And my God, do we have people like that today, debating the interpretation of the law. Jesus was questioned on a topic that was currently debated by rabbits, ants, priests in Israel. Which, commanded, which commandment was the greatest? At the time, rabbits and such as Hillel did not think all the commandments held equal importance. And we wanted to find out who is Hillel, the commentator introduced us to. He was an elder and is one of the most influential rabbis in Jewish history. He was the head of a school the House of Hill, that eventually became the primary academy for Torah study prior to the destruction of the Second Temple. So he was somebody that had made a mark in history. The idea was to find the parent commandment from which all the other commands could be reduced. Jesus responded with two passages familiar to his audience defining his understanding of the law and what it means to follow God's commands truly. Debating the commandment. Which commandment was the greatest? Our first outline, most importantly, Let's look at Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 30, and Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. The religious leaders wanted to know the answer to a very significant question. One of the scribes asked Jesus, which is the most important commandment of all? Jesus said the first and greatest commandment is to love God and quoted the Shema of Deuteronomy 6, Four through nine. Yes, we found a picture of the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away. When you lie down and when you rise, 
bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, we can see the importance of God's word, how God's word was valued even back then. Jesus quoted the Shema that all the Jews were familiar with. And we can see in these scriptures how important it was that they teach it to their children and that they get it down in them to love God with their all, to give their whole heart, mind, and soul over to Jesus, over to God. And then it says to not only teach it to the children, but put it up in your home. Talk about it on your way. Talk about it in your home and when you are away. Listen, he says, bind them as a sign on your hand. And we'll get more into the Shema, how the Jews recognize uh, the word of God and what they did to remember the word of God. Very interesting. The word Shema means to hear. Here is the Hebrew word that begins the most important prayer in Judaism. It is found in Deuteronomy 6 and 4, which begins with the command to hear, to hear what the Lord has to say. The whole Shema prayer, which includes verses 4 through 9, is spoken daily, my God, every day in the Jewish tradition. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, letting them know that they only serve one God. This means that loving God has to do with acknowledging God above all other allegiances. He then fleshed this out, explaining it is a command to love God with all the heart, soul, mind, and strength. Loving God encompasses the whole of our existence. All of us, heart, mind, and soul, everything, our totality, personality, were to love God. Loving God is the greatest commandment. Mark 12, 28 through 30, and Deuteronomy 6, chapter 6, verse 4 through 9. Questions to trip Jesus up. Their motivation was to trip Jesus up. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Mark 12 begins with Jesus telling a parable that offended the Pharisees and the Huronians, period. It offended the Pharisees and the Herodians, and they sought to lay hold on him. My, they was really mad and offended. They sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them, and they left him and went their way. And these, this parable that Jesus gave was concerning a husband man that had rented out his vineyard and he requested he sent his servant to uh get the fruit of the vineyard and they beat him and sent him on his way and he sent several servants and then the last time he sent his son and my god they say this is the heir of the of the uh, vineyard we're gonna kill him and then we're gonna take this vineyard for ourselves and they killed his son my god and so this is the parable that Jesus was telling them. And they knew that Jesus was really signifying concerning them. Then come unto him the Sadducees. It's another group of people which say there is no resurrection. And we know that the Sadducees believed that there was no resurrection. And they asked him saying, and it was concerning marriage in heaven. They said these bro one brother had a wife and the brother died and then his brother married the wife and then he died 
And then another brother married the wife, the same woman. And his question was, when they get to heaven, whose wife will she be? She'd have been married three times to all brothers. Whose wife will she be? That was the parable that, that was the saying that the Sadducees was trying to trip Jesus up. know the answer to that Jesus let them know there will be no marriage in heaven so let's look at the first commandment of all while it was obvious that the motivation of the three groups who were questioning Jesus was to trip him up there was another scribe that came to Jesus and was sincere in his question he had the right motive which is the first commandment of all that was his question which is the first commandment of all in these two verses jesus recited what uh, the jews called the shema words that every devout jew often recited if not daily first the shema states that god is one judaism is a monotheist monotheistic religion they believe in one God. And the word Shema means to hear. Also, the Shema included all thy heart, which is the heart. The heart is not only the seat of the affections, but the center of our beings, physical, moral, and intellectual. My God, the heart includes physical, moral, and intellectual the seat of our affections so all thy soul is what jesus said in the shema and we're going to look at that the mind is the understanding but especially the moral understanding so we're going to look at what the shema uh was about what well, we already did but we're going to Yes, we're going to examine all the words that was in the Shema. Love thy God with all, all thy strength. Strength has to do with power and might. The words together are an expression of the totality of one's being. We're to love him with our total being. To paraphrase Jesus, God wants us to love him with all that we have and all that we are. Shema, which is found in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 6. It starts out with, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. Those were the scriptures that is written on the Shema. Only one God, the Lord alone. God revealed himself to Israel as Lord, Yahweh, his personal name, and he gave his people the name Israel, which means he struggled with God. The name given to Jacob because he struggled with God and overcame. Knowing that there is only one God should have brought a great sense of security to the Lord's people. They did not have to worry about pleasing, competing gods with a small g with their competing demands. There is only one God and he alone deserves our worship love and obedience. Write his word in their hearts. Jeremiah prophesied of the day when God would write his word on the hearts of his people. There is what, this is what God desired of his people from the very beginning, that they would know his word so well that it would be internalized. Jeremiah 31 and 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, 
I would put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. The Old Testament was not meant only as a legalistic series of rules. God's people were to see in his word, his love demonstrated for them and calling on them to reciprocate. God's great love and care for us. Deuteronomy 6, 7, and 8. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. I just believe that people today don't take this scripture literally. They feel like that it was written for the children of Israel and people don't do this anymore. That once a week is good enough. My God, my God. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand and they shall be as frontless between thy eyes. Just as loving parents have strict rules for their children because they love them and want what's best for them so god's rules are to help us live in the most fulfilling ways ways in which we discover the great love and care that god has for us saints we believe the word of god is for us even today the old and the new testament and when God instructed the Israelites to do this, why wouldn't we have a heart and a desire to do it as loving parents likewise, to teach our children? And, you know, we know that we're not going to be teaching God's word 24-7. We're going to demonstrate it most of all. But there should be times in your schedule not just on Sunday, but we should have Bible study with our children in our homes. The best time whenever is for you to plant the word of God, to be sure to plant the word of God into the hearts of your children. Pray with them and give them Bible study at least once a week in the home. And then when you go to church, the pastor will reiterate what God has spoken in his word. They should be in Sunday school. Teach them diligently unto thy children. Serious. Let's see how serious Israel took the word of the Lord, commanded by God philanteries Deuteronomy 6 and 9 and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thine house and on thy gates the frontlet is a small container for a parchment containing bible verses once type is attached to the head or forehead once they type the bible verse into these little boxes is attached to their forehead or head the other to the left arm, as we see in the illustrations. These verses from Deuteronomy were among those placed into the phylacteries. Phylacteries sometimes called tefillin or small square leather boxes containing portions of scripture worn by conservative and orthodox Jews during prayer services. Phylacteries are worn in pairs one phylactery is strapped on the left arm and one is strapped to the forehead of the Jewish men during weekday morning prayers. The word phylactery comes from a Greek word meaning safeguard, protection, or amulet. Mezuzah, which means doorpost. This is how serious that God instructed the Israelites to do. The word mezuzah literally means doorpost. The mezuzah is affixed to the right-hand side 
of the doorpost as you enter the room. For the front door, the right as you enter is always considered the right side. A tiny scroll with verses meticulously handwritten is placed inside. And we see the picture here to our uh, right, perhaps maybe to your left. When an Orthodox Jew enters his home, he stops and touches the mezuzah, then kisses the fingers that touched it. This is how they valued the word of God. And God had instructed them to put it on their doorposts of their homes. Then God commanded them to diligently teach their children. Godly parents are to diligently teach their children to obey God's word, teach them with intensity that plants God's word into their lives. The commands of God were to be discussed and lived as examples inside the home and out, permeating every sphere of life. Psalm 78, 5 through 8, For he established a testimony in Jacob, and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. How serious is it that God wants us to teach our children, to make himself known to their children, that they might know him and that they might teach it to their children and that they might have hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. How do you think our children, how much do you think our children know concerning the word of God. Have we really taught our children the word of God? We can ask ourselves that question. And remember, it's never too late to have Bible study. If your children allow it, especially the grown children. Uh, nowadays, if you haven't done it when they were young, when they get older, they rebel against it. Their heart is not in it. And it's hard to even talk to them concerning the things of God. And we used to read it every Sunday morning before Sunday school, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Do we see this today? Do we see the stubborn and rebellious generation? Why? Many because the parents did not teach them when they were young to put their hope in God, to learn about God, to have a relationship with God to have Bible study and know the word of God. It's our responsibility, parents. This brings us to our second outline, neighborly love, Mark 12 and 31 and Leviticus 19 and 18. The measure of our love is to be the love we have for ourselves. Mm. The same thoughts and actions we have for ourselves are now to be directed toward our neighbor. This sets the bar high, saints. We do not hold a grudge against ourselves, do we? Or take revenge on ourselves, do we? So this must not be the way we treat others. We look out for and seek the best for ourselves. Now we are called by God to look out for others and seek the best for them. Loving others is the second greatest commandment, Mark 12 and 31. And the second is like, and this is God, this is Jesus 
still answering the scribe that asked him what is the greatest commandment and the second is like namely this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself there is none other commandment greater than these who is my neighbor luke 10 29 through 37 but he willing to justify himself said unto jesus and who is my neighbor and jesus answering said a certain man went down from jerusalem to jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead the priests and the levite which are jews saw him and passed on the other side the samaritan had compassion on him bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast set him on his beast and brought him to an end and took care of him then he paid the innkeeper and stated that take care of him told the innkeeper take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when i come again i will repay thee what a great samaritan which of the three jesus said was a neighbor and then he told them go and do likewise what comes from the hearts jesus showed that obedience to god's word is more than outward behavior it involves what comes from our hearts leviticus 19 and 18 thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself i am the lord to avenge is to punish take revenge or take ven vengeance to bear any grudge is to hang on to or store up anger my god to hang on to or store up anger this is a situation in which one is just waiting for the time to vent one's anger against one's own fellow citizen romans 12 and 19 what does it say vengeance is mine i will repay said the lord so saints let it go ask god to take the pain and the hurt away and let it go because uh, in romans paul strictly told them that the lord is saying vengeance is mine i will repay said the lord so again we want to reiterate who is thy neighbor all humankind and those especially in need but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself i am the lord jesus explained the circle of neighbors to all humankind especially to those in need all right so the scribe agreeing with jesus the scribe agreed with jesus he affirmed that god is one and there is no other he also affirmed that loving god with all of one's heart and he added the word understanding soul and strength is the first sign of loyalty to god beautiful we show our loyalty to god when we love him with all our all our total being our heart our understanding our soul and our strength think about those words loving your neighbor as yourself as the second sign of loyalty to him loyalty to god is to love your neighbor as yourself help us holy ghost outline the place of sacrifice mark 12 32 and 33 the scribe stated that these things is greater than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices samuel told king saul to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams the prophet amos said that the lord would not accept the burnt offerings 
and sacrifices of Israel and instead wanted to see justice, my God, your actions, the way you treat others, see justice roll down like waters and righteousness. He wanted them to live right, like an ever flowing stream. Amos 5, 24, the scribe understood that these religious ceremonies only symbolize the posture of one's heart toward God and the lifestyle of love that should be practiced in real life. This shows that to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves are what God really cares about. This is what he really cares about, not just religious ceremony. Loving God and loving others is greater than any religious ceremony. Mark 12, 32 and 33, and the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. The scribe showed that he understood that Jesus was saying that the heart attitude is more important than obeying outward regulations because it is love for God and love for our neighbors that motivates our action. More than ceremonies, being at church every time the doors open, being obedient, doing everything you're told, God is more concerned about your heart, your heart being right, that we show love with our actions. This brings us to our fourth outline new understanding of the kingdom of God Mark 12 and 34 and when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly he said unto him thou art not far from the kingdom of God and no man after that dust dust asked him or durst ask him any questions that ended the conversations from the other people when Jesus let them know that this young man, this young scribe answered discreetly and he let him know that he wasn't far from the kingdom of God. You're on your way. But we, uh, we notice in our commentary that he said, uh, part of the way is not enough. Loving God and loving others is a sign of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, Romans 14 and 17, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Well, what is the kingdom of God? But righteousness and peace. These are inward qualities. And joy in the Holy Ghost. Praise God, praise God. We can only have this righteousness, this peace, and this joy if we have the Holy Ghost. Then shall the king say unto them on his right, this is Matthew 25 and 34. On his right hand, come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Um, we wrote this because it, there's a new understanding of the kingdom of God is what our topic says. But many of us, if we were asked, what is the kingdom of God? We want to be able to give an answer to every man of the hope that we have within us, studying to show ourselves approved unto God. The kingdom of God is not in meat and drink. It's not in a particular place where you can have all the fest, festus, uh, feasts. It's not in meat and drink. But what is it? That inward part righteousness he's concerned about us living right peace to be peacemakers and to have the peace of god and joy in the holy ghost let's look at the kingdom of god jesus shut the mouths of men by stating thou art not far from the kingdom of god 
The simplest way to understand the kingdom of God is the realm where Jesus Christ reigns as king and God's authority is supreme. This kingdom exists here and now in part and in the lives and hearts of the redeemed as well as in perfection and fullness in the future. Mark 1, 14 and 15. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in the son of God. And we're going to learn that Every kingdom has a king. And it says here, Jesus Christ reigns as king. In the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ is going to rule. And God's authority is supreme. We will be obeying the word of God, the laws of God. Let your light shine. Our challenge is to truly love God with all of our being and everything that we have. This can only be done with a deep understanding of the love that God has for us. When we know that God gave his life for us, then loving him and others is less of a chore and more a privilege. We will see that it is a privilege to give love back when we understand how Jesus sacrificed his life for us. Loving God and loving our neighbors as ourselves are the most important commandments. When we practice this in our daily lives, people can experience the love Jesus has for them. Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works but also they will see and glorify your father, which is in heaven. What does this look like to you? What does this look like to you? When people can see while your light is shining and they see your good works, but they glorify your father, which is in heaven. We don't want to st try to steal God's glory, but let people know that you have the love of Christ in your heart because he first loved you, because he gave his life for you. And this is why you can find it easy. Our, uh, our church sings it's so easy to love one another. Another lesson that we have learned today, that we must love our neighbor as ourselves and to love God with all of our total being. Saints, let's support our Sunday school. Uh, we want to be sure to give at least $5. New Life Community Kojic at 1570 Chambers Road in Givelify. Make sure you have the right address for New Life Community in Givelify. And also, you can do Cash App with dollar sign cash, new life. Let's support our Sunday school. May God bless each and every one of us. Plant his word down in our hearts that we might not sin against him and that we might be fishers of men, fulfilling God's will and God's purpose for our lives. God bless.